Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 19th of August, 2020. I am Barry Hutchison, also known as JD Kirk, and this is episode 44 of Notes from a Scottish Author, my now semi-regular video blog and podcast series where I talk about uh, writing occasionally, uh, what I'm working on very occasionally, and um, weight loss. I'm on a 100-day weight loss challenge. This video is take two of today's episode because I recorded the entire episode, or rather, I spoke the entire episode without hitting the record button. So this is my second attempt at the video. Today was my way in for my 100-day challenge. Um, it's been, before I give the results, I'll, I'll do a little recap because... It's been an interesting few weeks with the weight loss challenge. I weigh myself every 10 days. And the last kind of few blocks of 10 days have been interesting. So uh, two blocks ago, 20 days ago, I um, weighed myself and I was... Uh, I'd lost quite a lot of weight that week, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's the right period of time. I had I'd set about decided to, to the previous ten days I hadn't lost much weight at all. And I decided that I was gonna change things up a bit and I was gonna stop eating at seven o'clock every evening. I think I've got the time frame right. So I was gonna stop eating seven o'clock every evening, and in that ten days I then lost six pounds. I didn't really adjust the amount of food I was eating, I just stopped at seven PM every night. The end of that 10 days, I had lost six pounds. The 10 days previously, I had lost two pounds or thereabouts. I can't remember. The f following 10 days, I decided to do a little experiment and I ate the same amount of food as I had done the previous 10 days. But instead of stopping at 7 p.m., I ate through till 10 o'clock at night. I just spread out the same number of calories over the course of the day. Over that 10 days, I lost one pound. So this last 10 days, this last block, I decided I was going to stop eating at 7pm every night, but I was going to slightly up my calorie intake. When I say I decided that, I just kind of ended up doing it and not really tracking as much as I used to. And I, I'm, I, I didn't go crazy, but I know that my calorie intake definitely increased. So I stopped eating at 7, upped my calorie intake. Interestingly, in the last 10 days... I have lost three pounds, three times as much weight as I lost in the 10 days previously when I ate fewer calories but spread them out throughout the day rather than stopping at 7pm. Is this coincidence? I don't know, I'll be honest. It's kind of anecdotal evidence at the moment, but for me, I think it means I'm going to stop eating at 7pm every night going forward, except for special occasions, obviously, but generally I'm going to finish eating at 7 o'clock. So uh, my weight is now, for those of you who have been keeping track and are doing mental calculations, my weight is now 15 stone 5 pounds. Actually, it's 15 stone 4.6 pounds. I lost close to 3.5 pounds, but I decided just for simplicity's sake, I would say 15 stone 5 pounds. Which means I have 5 pounds to lose over the next 20 days in order to hit my 15 stone target. 15 stone is 210 pounds, and in kilos... Don't know, 98, 99, something like that, 95, 97, I don't know, it's in the high 90s anyway, kilos wise. Uh, but 210 pounds or 15 stone was my target. The lightest I think I have ever been in my adult life, looking back at times I have lost weight before, is 15 stone 4 or 15 stone 3.8 technically. But so I'm now basically a pound away from being the lightest I have been in my adult life and that I've done that over the last 80 days in total I've lost uh, uh, two stone two pounds two stone one pound thereabouts over two stone anyway thereabouts I can't actually remember what my starting weight was 17 stone six or seven or eight thereabouts um, but I've lost over two stone anyway in that um, 80 days so happy with that still got this five pounds to lose so the next in a, uh, 20 days I'm going to really be focusing on what I'm eating I'm going to be stopping at 7 o'clock every night I'm going to be upping my exercise considerably which I need to do anyway because 
Uh, the problem I've always had with weight loss is that I can lose weight quite well. I, then, I usually have a target. I have like a, a holiday coming up or I was you know, talking at a big festival or something and I thought, oh, there's going to be hundreds of people. I need to lose weight. Uh, and I would do that. And then as soon as it was finished, I would eat all the food there was in the world and just uh, and put the weight back on again. So I don't want to do that this time because that zigzagging weight is not uh, it's not good. It's not healthy. Um, so I've set myself another target, a much bigger target. Um, in June next year, I should be taking part in Tough Mudder, uh, um, obstacle course, 10 mile obstacle course, filled with uh, obstacles like icy cold water, mud, vertical walls, electrocution. Looking forward to that one and um, and various other things. So uh, I need to get substantially fitter than I am now. Walking the dog and occasionally using the treadmill will not cut it to prepare for Tough Mudder. So uh, <clears throat> I'm starting now and building up my exercise over this next 20 days and then accelerating onwards towards Tough Mudder next year. So that's my, my fitness situation at the moment. It is uh, just before nine o'clock. I've already done the dog walk this morning. I've done about 7,000 steps thereabouts. Uh, about to crack on with writing. I'm working on the new J.D. Kirk book today. Book seven, The Big Man Upstairs, came out on Friday of last week. It's doing really well. Uh, number one in Scottish crime at the moment on Kindle. Uh, and yeah, really pleased with how that's done. Getting some great reviews, which is always nice. People seem to be enjoying it. Uh, best in the series, they're saying. You know, a far bit from me to, to say one way or another, but uh, people are enjoying it, so that's that's really good, nice to see. Book 8 pre-orders are coming in at an astonishing rate. Currently about 300, 350 people pre-ordering Book 8 every day. So crazy, great fastest pre-orders I've ever had. So really, really pleased with that. Going very well for old JD. Uh, I also today have to write a short piece for um, one of the biggest musical artists in the world and I, I can't tell you much more about why really at all I'm afraid but quite a, a thing to be doing, quite a way to be spending my, my morning, I'm looking forward to that I'm actually going to take some time over it uh, because you know I want to get it right rather than just rattle it off like I usually do with everything else I think because this person is, is you know one of the, the the most famous people on the planet I thought I might as well put, put a bit of effort in so I'll be doing that later on uh, and also today doing something um, which I'll talk about probably again in another nine days or so uh, I'm going to be pinning this to my notice board today this is a ticket from last year 28th of August 2019 for Nick Offerman and Nick Offerman best known as uh, Ron Swanson in Parks and Recreation. There he is. Uh, this, uh, almost this time last year, 28th of August last year, my son and I went to see Nick Offerman uh, in Glasgow. He was doing some stand-up. We drove down and we went to see the show. It was very funny, very good. We then uh, stopped off walking back to the car. We passed the dessert shop, so I had to get something there, obviously, and, and indulge. Then we started driving back up the road. We were about halfway back, um, just north of a place called Creel It was pitch dark. We turned a corner and got the impression of something on the road. And that was as far as I got. I thought feet. And then we hit something very, very hard. And the car um, caved in. Basically, the whole the, the bonnet came up, the windscreen shattered, the inside lights came on, the horn started blaring. Because the inside lights were on, you couldn't see anything at the side windows. It was just pitch dark. Smoke started billowing in through the vents. Um, my son was, you know, shouting and screaming and swearing as I was, and I tried to calm him down. I said, "No, it's all right. It's all right. We're okay." And then we hit something else, and I realised that we were still going. I had my foot jammed to the brake, and I was gripping the wheel. But I thought we'd stopped. It had been such an impact that I was convinced that we'd stopped moving. But we hadn't. We hit what I later discovered was a road sign. The road sign then ripped out the brake pipes underneath the car and the brake pedal went all the way to the floor. And I realised at that point that I had absolutely no control and no visibility of what was about to happen. 
And after a few seconds, the car shook really violently and then it stopped. And uh, horn still blaring, smoke still pouring in. I, checked, I looked at my son and I thought, God, is he okay? And he was, I couldn't see any blood. I thought, he's, he's okay. I said, right, wait a minute. Because I was convinced that if I opened the door, I would look out and I would be in the middle of the road and I would see headlights racing towards us and that was us dead. Um, instead, I opened the door and the car had come to a rest in a lay-by, in a little kind of parking bay at the side of the road. Just perfectly. Uh, kind of half mounted a verge. That's what stopped us, the verge. Beyond that was uh, some very big trees which we would have hit, but the verge slowed us enough to stop us. <coughs> so got out and the car was absolutely obliterated. I'll, when I'm talking about this next time, I'll maybe show, share some photos. And um, it turned out what I thought would hit a deer because um, that, that's not uncommon. And I thought it's obviously a very big deer because it's it's done an awful lot of damage. There was no front left to the car, basically. And it turned out it was a, a cow. A cow had been standing in the middle of the road. A, a black cow had been standing against the black background of the night. Uh, and it had been just as we'd come around the corner, it had been right there. There was absolutely no chance of stopping. Uh, and it, I'm, I'm going to pin this to the board today because it, it, it kind of when I found this in my bag the other day, the bag I'd obviously had with me at the time, um, it just made me realise just how close we were to being gone. You know, it's um, <clears throat> one of the policemen at the scene because of the way the, the, we hit the cow. The cow died, by the way. Commiserations to the cow's family. Um, the way we hit the cow, it kind of went off to the side, hit driver's side went off that way had it been a step to the left it would have come on top of the car the momentum and the weight would have crushed us completely and we would have been dead but for one step of a cow we are still alive um so i'm going to pin this to my board to just to remind myself of how quickly everything can change you know that is one step of a cow which is ludicrous that's that's the difference between my son and I being alive and being dead one step of a cow um, so I'm going to pin that up and, and, and keep that in mind that, that you know nothing lasts forever um, and you know to enjoy enjoy life while we can so that's it a bit of a bleak ending but it's an uplifting ending let's enjoy life let's take a moment today to to tell someone you love them or to, to you know to do something you love or Whatever it may be, just take a take a moment today to do something you really enjoy, um, and uh, I'll be writing for the one of the most successful musical artists in the world, which I shall enjoy immensely. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. I'm off. I'm hoping, for the love of God, that I've hit record this time, and I will go and upload this and crack on with work. Have a nice day, and I shall speak to you again soon. Bye for now. I did hit record.